Hello, survivors. Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, I'm your host, Jeffrey Card. Uh, today we've got a massive stream for you. We've got a lot going on uh, because we're doing the patch notes for Update 11. Uh, Update 11 has not dropped as of this uh, stream, but it's dropping very, very soon. We're going to have an, uh, a release date to announce for you by the end of the stream. Uh, I've got a couple of guests here who are specialists. Uh, we've got Scott Shapiro. Uh, yeah, so Scott is a QA tester on the uh, on the outfits team, and uh, next to them we've got Brant Fitzgerald, who you all know as usual. Brant Fitzgerald uh, is our local expert on weapons, and so we're going to be going through a ton of stuff. Let me grab my window back here. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but uh, it's a giant disaster here on my screen. Okay, so. We're going to be jumping into the game. In fact, let me just go get there right now. Uh, and this is the Update 11 version of the game. We have access to it on our Xbox. <laughs> you guys don't have it yet. Uh, though, by the, if you're watching this on YouTube or, or, or you know, the VOD on Twitch later on, maybe you do have it. I don't know. But so the very first thing that dominates the first half of our patch notes is just the outfit customization update, which, you know, if you folks haven't heard about it yet, uh, we have added outfit customization to State of Decay 2. In fact, let me move over to the right side like that. Okay, so I think we should probably start by, uh, whenever you get the chance, popping open our closet and let's look at what the closet is going to look like when players first grab the update. All right. So pop over here. Do we want to dress up our uh, our let's red talent person first, or, or grab Jeff the leader? Jeff really needs a fashionable update. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. So you hit Y or whatever key on the. I think it's C on the PC. Okay, on the PC, and um, yes, you go into your closet, <laughs> okay. and there's a couple different tabs, including a favorites, which we uh, explained in depth last week. But if you find a certain uh, outfit that you like then you can favorite it, and it's easy to find quickly so, again. So let's go through each of these things. Let's start with the hats, actually, because I think that's, right. they're, 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 they're what show up first on our patch notes. Did you? So we didn't cheat any of... We've cheated absolutely nothing. So this is exactly what the player is going to get. You should have some baseball caps. All right, so you'll see that uh, uh, the things that you haven't found in the world or gotten from Bounty Broker mm -hmm. are locked. So get out there and search bedrooms and duffel bags and maybe a gas can or two and you'll find <laughs> you'll find uh, some caps and you'll notice that there is actually uh, on each of the ones that were locked there was like an there were instructions right yep search containers so this tells you how to get them which is awesome and I should say by the way if you folks have any questions about outfits please write that we're gonna we're gonna be going through all of them first and then we'll be answering your questions afterwards so if you have any questions about the outfits or if you have any questions uh, for Scott uh, about being a tester at undead labs uh, please funnel those questions uh, through the chat. Uh, our, our moderators are going to be collecting those for us, and we'll answer them, uh, you know, towards the end. So, okay, so about, is it like half and half? How many of these do you get uh, up front versus how many we have out in the world? Scott, do you remember? Probably somewhere between a third and a quarter are unlocked to start, and then everything else is, almost all of it uh, in the initial update here is scavenged, but there are a couple that the Bounty Broker offers. So I baseball just, caps are among the ones you can get early on. I just saw a great question, and mm -hmm. I may know the answer, but I want to check with this. Uh, what if you've all, from Maya oh Maya on Mixer says, what if you've already scavenged most of your map? Will they still show up? That is a Scott question. <laughs> so unfortunately, anything, any container that you've opened can't have uh, any outfit pieces in it. If you have any unopened containers, then of the right in the right sort of sites, like houses mostly, then you can go to a house on a map that exists and maybe find something. But uh, anything that has already been looted, uh, there's not going to be any outfit stuff appearing in it. So. So the best way is probably to migrate to a new map and let it let it yeah. re-roll. I actually have a question. I don't know the answer to. Um, about how long does it, if somebody is starting in a new map and they want to scavenge for all of the scavengeable items, minus the ones that they couldn't get on that map, about how long should someone expect that to take? I, I know it's random, so there's a lot of variance, but do you have a rough idea? Not I didn't clear this really? question with Scott in advance. <laughs> eh. Oh, I, 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 it's definitely something we were thinking about and kind of talking about, but it's 
because it is uh, a chance-based thing, um, and it does vary by map because some maps have higher density housing, mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff is in housing, but uh, stuff like the army caps that are, or the, um, over in the clothes, there's a couple of military outfits, and some of that stuff, since it's only available at, like, military camps, military roadblocks, that sort of thing, there's only, you know, maybe a dozen of those per map, and you have maybe a 5% chance of getting a piece of clothing in one of those, so it's going to take going through a few maps to get every army cap, every tactical uniform, so that's going to be kind of a long tail. Mm -hmm. The stuff in houses, um, probably doing two full map clears will get everything there, uh, and you might get lucky and pull, you know, a whole bunch of things relatively early on or relatively late in the map, and be finished in one map, might, again, long tail and have uh, a little longer, but, you know, it's it's definitely a multi-hour endeavor, but if you, <laughs> if you just laser focus on looting every house and then going to a new map, it's definitely something that is feasible to do in a very, a very long session, but it's going to be all you're doing. Gotcha. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. So that's kind of good because, you know, we want people to be able to sort of uh, to spend some, not just blast through it and they've got everything and, then, and they're done, right? We want people yeah. to be able to spend some time sort of soaking in this feature. So Two Easy Kids uh, asked, can you take clothes from other characters that you may encounter and kill, and can you trade clothes with friends? And both of those are no. Yeah. Right. The scavenging clothes from uh, hostile survivors is maybe one day. Um, trading, since everything is an account bound unlock, everything's just going to be have to un you're going to unlock on your own. Yeah, you don't actually have an object you carry around. When you find an item in a container, you consume the item by taking it out of the container. So you don't have yep. a thing you can pass to your friend. You just you've just got it, and they've got to find it themselves. All right. So it looks like we start off with some baseball caps. That being the best one of all time. <laughs> yes. Um, but I'm going to put on a Bronto gas cap for now. Um, we do not start with cowboy hats. We so do look not forward to finding some cowboy that's hats. That's right. Get out there and look. Search containers in farms and campgrounds for cowboy hats. Makes sense. That's where cowboys live. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Dockyard. Okay, I put this one on too because I happen to be wearing my my dockyard. I should have brought. I should have brought a hat. I don't know. I, I just did this because my head was cold. It's Malik's hat. And then we got some flat brim stuff. I can also change outfits. Look how multi-featured I am. Makes a statement without saying anything. I love it. Because <laughs> you're too cool for logos. And then not too cool. That's my, that, that's my favorite of those. This one? Yeah. Okay, I put it on. I, it does say uh, it doesn't actually grant martial arts talent, even though it's a tiger fist breath logo. <laughs> uh, we've got a question from uh, Matt SKX. Uh, or, yeah, will, will there be item duplicates? Will you find the same uh, the same clothing item you've already unlocked in another nope. container? Uh, if it if it uh, if a loot table if it draws from clothing, it will only be things you haven't unlocked yet. I can't see the. Can you pull me to the oh. bottom of the messages? Because I'm oh, not sure. I'm not seeing updates now. We're way remember. behind. I don't know how we got unscrolled. There we go. This is yeah. a ramshackle operation we got yeah, put together it here. It's great. Um, are we showing? Well, it's not. It's locked. Oh, yeah. Oh, is yeah, it it's locked? locked anyway, so we can't see it. Complete yeah. the pro Oh, that's right. It's bounty. Okay. <laughs> uh, knit caps are locked. Military helmets are locked. Um, and also, just as a quick reminder, this doesn't mean you can stick your head inside a jug's mouth or anything. <laughs> be, be safe, everyone. Be safe. <laughs> be smart. Use your noggin. So uh, Sixo wants to know, um, are th we re mentioned last time that the leather jackets are distributed across uh, all, all three of the maps, mm -hmm. so players have to explore all of them uh, to, to find those. Are there any others like that, or is it just the leather jackets? Um, le the, the leather jackets are the ones that we sort of like intended to ha have that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think there might be a couple other things where some co color variants ended up only on specific maps. Um, but offhand, I don't Can't recall. think of any. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the le leather jackets were like, from the beginning, it's like, oh, let's, let's make leather jackets. So let's separate them out, put them on different maps. 
We got so we ended up with the clothing. We start off with the denim jackets, pre-ripped by Alan himself. <laughs> That's actually uh, a scan of one of our um, employees' personal jackets, and the I remember when uh, when they said we're going to start putting outfits in. I ran over to to Alan's desk and asked him to bring his jacket in for scanning because <laughs> it has the best wear pattern ever. I mean, that's... Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Oh, we've got a question from uh, uh, ZNX13. Uh, I can't pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, is this retroactive or do we need a new map to get any of these outfits to spawn? Uh, anytime you loot a container in a, in a place that can have an outfit, there could potentially be an outfit there, so you will not need to change maps uh, unless... You won't, you won't need to change maps to get anything to start showing up, uh, but if you've looted all the houses already, then you're not going to have a lot of places where you can find stuff. Yeah. So we don't actually like pre-populate all the containers with all of the, uh, the loot that will ever be in them. Each time you open a container, that's when we're doing the random roll. Yeah. And so that means that we can update the game and change the loot tables, and you immediately get the benefits of, of it. You don't have to start a new map in order to do it. And here we go. We've got one that has some unlocks, but others that are locked. we got flannels. It is Seattle. Of course. So we had to have flannels. Uh, yep. This one says, search containers and houses. So... Get out there and loot those houses. Fall Down Gaboom wants to know if outfits have weight or stats of any kind. They do not. They make you 84% cooler. Yeah, plus two charisma. That's, uh, that's pretty right. much it. Um, okay, so moving on. Layered yes. t-shirts. Um, I love that one with the iron zombie hands grabbing. Ironically, apparently zombie fashion is really cool in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. Um, the S and B, you can actually basically make yourself up to be an S and B employee if you want. <laughs> nice. In several ways. <laughs> what is this? War for Deliverance. That sounds like a like a Norwegian metal band. It probably is. Yeah, I hope we don't get sued by War for Deliverance. <laughs> uh, Speedy has a question. Uh, will, when you start a new community, are your outfits gone? Do you have to re-earn them? Nope, everything is account bound, so anything you unlock in any community is accessible in every other community, including uh, Heartland, if you have that. Uh, so you can give everyone Malik's hat, you can put Helen on a cowboy hat, which um, somebody <laughs> here was very excited about. Uh, <laughs> So that's cool. And that means that, for instance, if you want to you know, be looting outfits in different maps, you can actually be doing that simultaneously with different communities in different maps, and they'll all get, you know, gain the benefits of each other's work. Swine and bovine outfit. What? So this one has a very special message. Are we talking <laughs> about it? Uh, you know, we, do, we have, the patch notes do talk about the fact that there's going to be something going on later this month. So go ahead, go ahead and read it. It says, receive this item as a free gift by logging into the game between October 25th and October 31st. So make sure. You're Steve, paying attention. Steve, oh, that's mean. I had hair 35 years ago. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so set a reminder on your calendars. You want to be playing State of Decay 2 yep. sometime during that period of time. Because you'll get, you'll get some you'll new get, loots. You'll get something, and we're not going to tell you what it is. And also, don't <laughs> eat breakfast that day. Yeah, exactly. And tactical uniforms are locked. So, oh, Ryan Wilkes wants to know: uh, Do the red talon daybreak masks come off with this update? They do. Yes, you can. Uh, you have the option. I think you've got like one of your options when you're uh, dressing a character is that you can uh, just choose to have no hat, even yes. if they came with a hat. Right? Yes. Uh, did that character over there start with a hat? No, they started okay. in the uh, with the with the uh, traditional red talon uniform. Okay. You can always switch back to default yeah. clothes too. Yeah. So let's say I let's say I put a flannel. Oops, I'm still learning the controls here. <laughs> I can go default and take take them back to their original clothing. So we don't have any red talent outfits you can put on a character. So the red talent outfit is still something you can only earn by uh, by recruiting a character uh, via daybreak. All right. So now Jeff is ready. I'll go ahead and switch whatever. Now, he has a... If we are all dressed. Survive, we can't let the zombies take over our town. I sh we should probably um, go find Cash Beaumont. Yeah, that's a good so idea. So that we can... Um, I was just thinking, I'm going to look through the patch notes, see if we missed anything. I don't think we did. 
because uh, we got favoriting items. Oh, uh, we got the ability to rotate the character on that screen. We saw that last week. And I, I did, did it a little bit. But, okay, cool. But I will highlight that because it's cool. So you can go to your closet and then rotate your character. Butt cam! And move in and out so you can see the whole thing. So, so we are publicly calling it the butt cam. Oh, I just called it that. <laughs> so we <laughs> guess we did internally call it butt cam. It is not an officially branded butt cam with a little TM afterwards. No, it's That's not. That's just, That's maybe, maybe it's a descriptive day. term. It's a descriptive term. That's right. We haven't patented our butt cam uh, because so many people have done them. Um, so yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so that is basically the outfit. So you guys go ahead and just explore the crap out of that. That's right. Um, I did have, oh, while you're headed over to Cash, uh, to, to meet up with Cash and see what else he has to offer. Um, I, you know what, I don't trust myself, so I'm going to load this up with a um, toolkit. So, when a feature involves a lot of randomness, like loot tables and things like that, like for instance, you know, like you're looting for outfits, like nope, there's so in. many different things that could happen. How do you ever reach a point where you're satisfied that you've tested it enough? Well, <laughs> on one level, you're really not. There's always that nagging worry that maybe maybe something's going to slip through because testing every permutation is you know not feasible, especially as the game gets bigger. But for the most part, um, uh, everybody everybody on the test team playing for you know a bunch of hours when we're getting ready for a big release like this. If nothing that's uh, based on randomness causes any problems, then you know we feel pretty confident that nothing else is going to. Uh, also, some of it is um, when we hand off some of uh, some of the big stuff like that, like testing all these random combinations to some of the uh, Microsoft like directly employed external tests. If they don't find anything because they have some very focused and dedicated thorough testers that are like hired to do this sort of just crank through everything in this random uh, thing that spits out random combinations. Uh, if they don't find anything, then yeah, there's, everything is fine. <laughs> if the people who spend eight hours nice. a day hitting random, is it okay? Random, is it okay? In you know a dozen different games, then it's fine. So, we, so it's basically kind of like bulk human power that we use to kind of overcome some of those, some yeah. of those limitations. And we, we do have a few tools for looting, wherein we can tell the game to just, you know, stick a bunch of loot here as, as if it were uh, just pull, as if it were doing it naturally, just pulling from tables or reset all the loot on the map and being able to run around and, and loot easily is, you know, it helps a lot. Yeah. yeah, I remember uh, we got our first version of that tool when I was working on State of Decay 1, and we wanted to sort of rejigger the way the loot tables work so people would be more guaranteed to get stuff they expected from different places. Having the ability to just sort of dump all the loot from the entire map and just look at it on a spreadsheet or on a list was so much better than having to just sort of poke around and hope that I was having a representative experience oh, by yeah. looting house after house after house after house. Uh, VIP from um, YouTube, yes, of course. Uh, this is going to take advantage of our delivery system, um, and there will be outfits to come, yeah. for sure. Yeah, we've actually, yeah, right at the top of the patch notes, we, we, we promised that, that like, you know, this is the first set of outfits you're gonna get, but we're already, you know, looking at, at, at what the next, the next outfit drop is gonna be. And so, you know, we've got some ideas. Some folks in the chat have some good ideas too. Uh, if there's particular outfits you wanna see, hey, where's Cash? Yeah, there it is. Go to support.statedecay.com, click on community, go to the wish list, tell us the outfits that you wanna see. You're uh, driving away from him. Am I? Yes. Oh, oh behind, yeah, his arrow is behind you, that yes. is true. You were going the right way and then you turned around. Well, I like driving. Here. So Console Freak wants to know, can we equip the Red Talon Mask on our non-Red Talon characters? There is no Red Talon Mask on a drop table or anything like that at the moment. So no. It's, yeah. If it's something people wanted, we could probably make it happen, but it is not in oh. this initial release. Yeah. And we'd be cautious about it too because those red talent operators, I mean, their skills are unique, uh, but also their appearance is sort of how you can recognize that you've got a unique character with those skills. And yeah. so we would be that, that's probably the one outfit we would hesitate to, with because of, of what it means to players who've been playing Daybreak. All right, so we're about to talk to Cash and this would be a good time to maybe start talking about 
The weapons? The new weapons. Yeah, let's talk about it. So we've got a new weapon pack that is dropping. It's a, similar to a lot of the other ones. It's called Fearsome Footage. And why is it called Fearsome Footage, Brent? Well, because there's some iconic weapons in movies. And, I, I and think TV. There's some TV references TV in here. TV as well. But, um, yeah, definitely TV. In fact, the first one I'm, I'm, I'm uh, highlighting happens to be the second greatest television show that's ever been made. <laughs> Which is? Buffy the Vampire Slayer, of oh, course. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so we've got Senor Pokey. What is Senor Pokey? Well, in in the show, she uh, lovingly calls her favorite steak Mr. Pokey, right? And, and this is not that steak. This Just is not that steak. Just being very clear, this, this is, is not the steak from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Inspired completely out of fan love. Don't <laughs> sue us. Senior Pokey. Um... And it's a wooden it, it's a wooden stake that you can use as a close combat weapon. Um, moving on, we have the slasher machete, which is um, any part of what is it? Friday the Thirteenth. There's like nineteen thousand movies and every knockoff thereof. Yeah, and this, unlike our regular machetes, um, has little bits of. Uh, movie blood still on it it's special effects <laughs> special effects absolutely yes. yes um and then uh and so that one's going to be fun to run around with yeah. especially notice how high its dismember chance is yes it's got a, <laughs> it's got it's uh we, we we played around with some of the numbers yeah i like uh cash beaumont's uh comment up there is, you know, I fully support the rights of every person to bear arms. Of course, I don't consider zombies to be persons, so they get their arms cut off. That's right. And uh, let's see, the other melee weapon is the barbed wire bat. Um, made famous in, I mean... We've seen these around in a few different places. They're but, around. Um, yeah. I mean, there's uh, a big one in Walking Dead, but um, so many like zombie movies have them. Um, yeah. They're, they're all over the place. But this one, our melee weapons, uh, Mark Lautenbach went crazy making yeah. and did a beautiful job. Um, as an aside, we have um, one of the bounties that's available is the horribly disgusting Juggernaut mask, which we showed it's, last week. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the worst thing we've ever made, and we love it to death. <laughs> until until the end of October. Until then it's the, the end of October. Thing we've ever made. Then it's the second most horrific thing we've ever made. <laughs> and when I say worst, I just mean in terms of the emotions you feel looking yes, at. Yes. No. It's <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's, it's completely gorgeous. Looking at it will make your life worse. <laughs> <laughs> but um, our character artist who did most who, who does basically all of these outfits yeah. is a genius. Yeah. It's um, phenomenal. She's a luminary in the field. Um, and then, let's see, the skeleton hoodie, which is going to be one of those favorites that yeah. people grab. And it's, it's, it's skeleton hoodie was already in the game, but it was, a, it was a favorite that people would just, they would, re, they would randomize their characters forever trying to find it. Right. You know, and so, yeah. Now you don't have to randomize. <laughs> Except <laughs> unless you're trying to find a specific name, which, you know, if you're looking for it, you'll never find it. Yeah. But, okay, moving on to the firearms. Dan Mode went, um, went ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Finally worked that joke in. <laughs> <laughs> and all three of our firearms are super iconic, but they're all inspired by a single movie. Um, but you'll find, I mean, like the shotgun and, and the Uzi are everywhere. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. You see this all the time. But, um, and if people haven't figured out just by the combination of a 45 long slide, a Spaz 12, and the Uzi 9mm, there's some. There's a really famous sort of sci-fi movie that most people know about, starring somebody that everyone knows about. Yeah, let's let's just say that you know once you uh, once you collect these bounties from from Cash Beaumont, you'll you'll be back. You'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. The only the only gun we didn't make in that famous set was a phased plasma rifle in the 40 watt range. Yes, exactly. That that just wasn't available you because know, they, they didn't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uzi 9mm, of course we're talking about the first Terminator when Arnold goes in and uh, and uh, does a little shopping, but doesn't pay for it. 
<laughs> yeah. He does not pay for his purchases. He... And you, if, and that's not an option with Cash Belmont. You have to pay. Yeah. You have to do. You have to do the bounty. That's Cash, the only way to get the get the guns. Cash saw the movie. He's not falling for it. <laughs> so um, yeah, we have the Uzi, the the true Uzi nine millimeter. Um, the, in the so I love the movie, um, the Rover. With like uh, Guy Pierce and uh, whatever, it was it's, it was a post-apocalyptic, you know, crazy thing. But there's a scene in that movie where somebody goes to buy guns, and I'm like, hasn't the person selling the gun seen the Terminator? <laughs> Haven't they seen this movie? Don't they know what's coming? Like they were not careful enough. Don't leave at ammo all. sitting next to the. Yeah, exactly. And you then can't do that. Conveniently turn around, like, oh, let me check the shelf. Well, <laughs> yeah, no. No, it doesn't work. Um, the super iconic and. Long illegal in the United States, Spaz 12. Um, its silhouette is known in so many movies. I think they used the same one uh, <laughs> in every movie in the 80s. I mean, the actual same prop. Gun. Physical prop, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I, mean, I mostly know it from Call of Duty, and uh, it's really familiar. <laughs> to I mean, me there, so. even, even um, Jurassic Park has a scene yeah. with, with that firearm in it. Um, yeah, they uh, they were branded illegal and couldn't be imported in the United States after like I can't remember. Somebody will know, but um, 70s or 80s, I don't know. But anyways, this one is is the 12 gauge auto loda <laughs> that is uh, among Arnold's shopping list in Terminator, and then the um, 45 long slide with laser siding. Um, <laughs> Mark Lautenbach, get in here so you can do the voice. I can't do Arnold's voice as good as you, please. Um, but so the first question you guys are going to ask is, does the laser sight work? No. In fact, in the movie, it didn't work either. It was total prop. So this is completely authentic. This is completely authentic <laughs> to the actual, you know, movie. The 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 gun in the movie was. It, they hadn't perfected laser technology yet, so they had this battery pack. The battery uh, cords ran up Arnold's arm down to a like car battery that sat on the <laughs> Seriously? ground. Seriously? Yeah, yes. But um, this one is 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 specific to that movie, and so those of you who want to run around and play with this 45 long side, none of these are actual reskins. All of these weapons, and every time we do weapons, with very few exceptions, they're actually we remodel them. We do some additions. So. All those people are saying, oh, they're just doing new skins, blah, blah, blah. We're not. <laughs> and that's how you sound. That's right. Uh, so we've got a few more questions uh, from the audience. So uh, Brandon Babinek asks, uh, if we find a single piece of clothing once, will we be able to use it on an infinite number of characters, or will we be limited to just one? Uh, you can you can put the same piece of clothing on your entire community of 11 people if you want. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to keep finding that same one over and over again. I'm actually really looking forward to the screenshots of people's community screens where everyone is dressed as the same dork. Uh, I want everyone on in my community dressed in that hot outfit that Cash <laughs> yeah. is wearing right now. Look at that! Oh, looks like uh, that is, wow. I haven't seen that outfit in that lighting. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, okay. Mark is going. I'm going to talk to Cash again, and Mark is actually going to. You got to get over here and do the. Come over here and do the voice. I'm moving. This is Mark's. Mark's uh, Schwarzenegger voice is spot on. In yeah. fact, well, let's let's he, make sure to build it up as much as we can, so people yeah, can only be disappointed. Like he's he's possible. available for voice work too. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm here. <laughs> 12 gauge auto loader, 45 long slide with laser siding, Uzi 9 millimeter, base plus rifle in the 40 yard range. Just what you see, pal. Strong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you for Give, us, give us the. Uh, 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 there we uh, go. Uh, we, did it. <laughs> we did it. We got it. Okay, we have another question. Um, Just let's see here. There. Will, so, will someone be able to buy clothing from traders who are not Cash Beaumont? At the moment, no. Uh, it's something no, that's, you know, possibly in the future. Uh, but at the moment, it's the stuff you start with, stuff you can loot, Cash Beaumont, and the special Halloween Halloween outfit. secrets. That's right. <laughs> secrets. You guys, basically, if you, if you don't play Stated K at all for the next year, make sure that you log on. That the 25th week. 25th or 31st. Yeah. 31st. Uh, Obi Wan comes wants to know. It makes Sarah very happy. <laughs> Am I more likely to find outfits on higher difficulties, or is it the same? Loot? It's the same loot table. 
So, Mark, you should run around and play using only Arnold voice now. <laughs> Why did I come? You're so <laughs> happy. You're so happy I called you in here. Yo, oh, yes. Do you want me to sit down and play? Yes, that'd be okay. great. All right. They've seen me enough for one day. You have so many fans here. So I should point out, by the way, to everybody in the chat, uh, that we are doing um, uh, a giveaway right now. Uh, for, oh, yeah, see you later, Mark. Bye, Mark. Uh, we're doing a giveaway right now uh, for State of Decay patches. So uh, if you want to participate, hit uh, exclamation point enter in do, the chat. Do we have uh, one? If you, uh, we don't have one here. No, I oh, forgot to get it. Oh, they're super cool. They're really cool. They're super cool. Here, I'm going to go get one. You okay. go ahead. You, you play. I don't know. Does, does, does Scott know how to play this game? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Better than you and I ever will. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, it's exclamation point, enter. Put that in the chat. Uh, they're going to be doing the drawing at around uh, 350. So we're going to, you know, right. we'll, we'll get the get the winners here's there. Here's the patch. There we go. Yeah. So that is the patch. Iron on. Beautiful. Super cool. You can make your own State of Decay merch with this thing. That's right. So you that can, You can get a cool Gears of War jacket and then put this over the logo. <laughs> Exactly. Actually, we had another question. Um, are we? The, the question was, are we ever going to get um, uh, outfits uh, that are representative of other Microsoft franchise, things like Gears of War? Um, and I believe, so Susan hinted about this last week. Uh, we don't have any specific immediate plans, but that is not outside the realm of possibility. Uh, we have, you know, we have talked oh, with some keep folks. Playing, keep playing. Uh, I'm going to drive Norma then. <laughs> drive Norma, except that one's broken. I've already checked. Oh. So, so we, we have raised the question. Uh, there's no particular, no specific guarantees or promises we can make about it because it's, you know, it's a process uh, to, to, to collaborate with those other studios, make sure everyone's comfortable with the way we're representing each other. But, you know, there is there is a State of Decay logo in Gears 5 right now, so there's all there's all kinds of, uh, of potential there. So, so, sure, possibly in the future, but we, uh, uh, we can't, you know, we can't give you any specific promises about that. All right. I, did I use, I think I used, did. Better have a. Oh, okay. Uh, no one in particular wants to know, are there any uh, outfits that are only lootable um, in Trumbull Valley? At the moment, no. Theoretically, we could in the future, but right now, no. That's, that's not, not a thing. So, so we've gone through um, the patch notes for the outfit system. We've gone through the patch notes for, uh, for some footage, for the weapons. Let's see what else is in this update. So Wait, there's more? There's more. Uh, so the first one is the biggest one. Um, in our, we got a, our technical category here. We made major improvements to multiplayer stability across the board. Uh, so there's a lot of people who've been getting code three and co code four errors. Um, and we've put some, we, it took us a long time to sort of research what could be going on, trying to solve it. it it's, it's been driving us crazy listening to you guys uh, talk about the, the struggles you've been having with, with multiplayer connectivity. So um, it makes multiplayer so, harder to test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to test and find, you know, replicate the exact conditions that people are under. To, you know, we had to put a bunch of new telemetry in the game to try to figure out what was going on. Classic. <laughs> and uh, so it Every took us some time. time. Uh, but we have made major improvements with this update. We, we, you know, Microsoft tested the heck out of it. Uh, the, the, the difference is definitely noticeable. We can't promise that no one will ever have a disconnect. Obviously, a lot still depends on your local conditions and stuff like that. Um, and nothing's ever perfect. But we think we've made a major improvement to it. And so we, we really want you folks, people who have maybe um, stopped playing multiplayer, you know, because uh, they were worried about connectivity issues, please try it again. We, we would, would love for you to, 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 see, to see these improvements. Those, those Microsoft testers have a whole suite of make the local network awful tools, <laughs> and it was holding up to their standards through that, so significant improvement. Yeah, it gives us a lot more confidence that, um, <laughs> that things are going to be going well. I think we should mention we are shipping with a known uh, issue. Well, so it's actually, we just found out that uh, that, that issue is it's already, it's already in the game, so, so no, uh, yeah. If, uh, and I would like to acknowledge that it's there yeah. and let you guys know we're working on it. It's if you start a new game and go through the tutorial. And if you like rush through the tutorial. Yeah, if you rush through the tutorial, it's really weird. It, we, we actually haven't gotten any tickets on it yet, but I want to let you know we're aware of, there's a goofiness with the car. When the, it technically is with the concrete. Yeah, oh, it's, it's like, with the concrete? Yeah, so when you're driving on certain roads and certain surfaces, uh, the, the car behavior goes kind of wonky. And we're not. We're we're still tracking down what the cause might be. But if you like, start stop and restart the game, 
apparently it fixes it. So if you get far enough away that it's no longer in the active like zone of where things are, that will also yeah. So you can either just get away from it or uh, restart the game and it's all back to normal. But if you guys were seeing, if you guys decided to play through uh, again with a new start and ran through the tutorial and started seeing weirdness, it's fixable. In yeah. your it, right now, we're just gonna try and get back. This making games like this, especially one that we didn't know was going to be a live service when we started it. <laughs> um, the architecture is a little bit different, and every time you put a shiny new thing on the front of the bus, some something falls off the back, yeah. and um, sometimes we don't know about it because it's but, impossible to test for everything. But the thing that we realized uh, that, that actually made us realize that, that, that it was going to be okay for us to ship this update is that this bug that we found in the new update, <laughs> it was also in the previous update and the one before that. It's already out. So it's, it's been in the wild for a while. So yeah. like, you know what? We're not making it worse, so let's just ship update 11 and we'll be fine. But uh, So everything's okay. Full transparency. Yeah, so if you haven't already run into it, it's nothing new, and uh, and, and we're definitely, we're definitely just on it. Loot? Yep. Oh, we looted a jacket! Oh, nice! Look at that! Look at that sweet jacket! I didn't even notice that was going on. I'm like, hey, there's a house right here. Let's see uh, if there's anything exciting. <laughs> and yes, now I uh, also got just needed boots. Yeah, I love that you could ch you could change immediately too. Like as soon yep. as you got the outfit, you could immediately check it out, try it on. There's nothing you didn't have to like run it home, put it in your supply locker, or anything like that. How awkward would that be if, if you wanted to change an outfit while you're in the field, you actually had to take the time to <laughs> take your pants off, take your pants and, off then and then the zombies, zombies show attack? Up. You're and, and you run and you trip and fall They're down. always showing up when you're in your underpants. Your ankles. That's right. Okay, let's get to some other patch yeah. notes. So um, we made some subtle advancements to our hair shader, uh, improving the way that hair looks under different lighting conditions. Basically, we were looking so hard at the characters, we're like, we can do better with the hair. Um, it's it's a subtle thing. It's more if you're uh, like a, a, an aesthetic aficionado that you'll be able to see the difference. And it's more about the way that light plays on your hair uh, when you're entering different environments and different lighting conditions. But uh, but the hair does look better. Um, we fixed a bug that was hard locking the game if you continued too soon after editing exiting to the main menu. So you exit to the main menu and then immediately continue, the game could hard lock, and now it won't. Amarga Vita, that's why I handed the control over to Scott, because yeah. I'm I'm a trash fire. <laughs> uh, we also just improved general stability, fix some rare crashes. Anytime we find out about a crash, we're always fixing it. So there's always going to be a, t a patch note that says something like that. Um, in the items category, uh, we, we mentioned this last week, uh, all the backpacks have been renamed uh, to tell you what color they are. Uh, right. This should make it easier to coordinate backpacks with your new outfits. Um, so, so this is what this was. I spent a day doing this. Uh, and it was actually one of the better days that I spent. I, I, for some reason, going through and just renaming three hundred things is relaxing. It's kind of a zen activity. What you got? Oh yeah, here we go. I have an all big derb. Right. Oh, you got one of the best ones. Huh? So I didn't even realize what weird backpacks we had in this game. Because when you pick up a backpack, it doesn't when it doesn't tell you what color it is. You're like, oh, it's just it's another six. Uh, you know, another six slot backpack, whatever. Wait, I'm not what even is, gonna look at it, it's just like all my other backpacks. What is the Aldrich? Dur it, it's like, there's art on that backpack. It's hard to so see it, right now. The, the it's, it's, nighttime. it's nighttime, the lighting conditions are bad for it, but but yeah, if, if, if you got under a light or something, there's like, oh, I see. There is, okay. there's some fine art <laughs> inscribed all over that backpack. Uh, and so now, now you can find the more special backpacks uh, by looking for looking at their names, which is which is great. That's I super can't cool. believe you happen to have the Albrecht Durer backpack right now. That's awesome. There's also a Hieronymus Bosch backpack, which is amazing. It's got like the the whatever the Earthly Delights triptych on it. It's it's great. Anyway, um, so that's going on. Also, thank goodness that's public domain. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, recruits from military enclaves now carry a variety of different sized military backpacks instead of always having the same one. Um, and this was actually, uh, so I originally intended this to go out with, uh, the, with the update that added, I think it was update 10 that added the military enclaves. Um, but I did it at the very last minute without telling anyone. Yes. And, uh, and so Wait, I- Wait, no, it was nine. Was it nine? I okay. it was nine. It was a while ago. Um, but, but basically my plan was, uh, to, you know, I, I, I added all, I, I varied all the backpacks. Okay, there's different backpacks on different characters, and so when you get a military character, they don't always have the same exact backpack on. And I was real proud of it. And then I went to uh, Scott's boss, uh, Carrie, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, Carrie, I just changed up all the backpacks." And Carrie's like, "We're about to ship an update. You can't change all the backpacks. We're about to ship because somebody has to spend a bunch of time making sure I did that right. And if they don't, I can, I could just." 
put a bunch of bugs in the game that nobody knows about until the last minute. And so, yeah, so basically, so I, I reverted my change and I didn't do it. And then I found, when I was going through all the backpacks again uh, for, for update 11, I was like, oh, right, I was gonna put these backpacks on the military guys, so. Uh, so yeah, so there's, there's different backpacks on them. There's like now five different military backpacks instead of just the one military backpack. And they'd actually been sitting in the game for a long time, we just hadn't been using them, so. They're there. But speaking of the military survivors, uh, this is one thing that we are removing from the game, which is now that we've got uh, the ability to change into combat gear through the outfit system, the temporary uh, uh, radio command that we put in that was locate military survivors, as Scott was just showing you there on the screen, uh, it's gone now. So now you're back to just one option for recruiting survivors. There's still a low chance uh, that, that any enclave that spawns could be a military enclave, so they're still in the game. We just don't have the direct line to the military enclaves uh, through the radio menu. And basically, exactly. from the, when, I, when, I, when I originally put that in there and I was like, hey, this is just a temporary measure for people, what I was thinking was, this is going to last until we get outfit customization into the game. And once we get outfit customization in, into the game and we've got military fatigues, army helmets, army hats, all of that available for you to put on any character, the urgency of, of letting you uh, recruit yep. these military enclaves, it just, it, it goes away. And so, so it served its purpose, it's gone now. So if somebody really loved it, I apologize. Uh, but that's, this, is, this is the way we want our radio menu to look right now. And, uh, and so if you want to have a, a, a bunch of army folks, go out there and, and, and unlock all right. those, uh, those outfits. Visit all those uh, roadblocks and, and satellite uplink centers and military field hospitals and There's have at it. Now. Ooh, let's get some there camo gear. And a unless fire we, extinguisher? Yeah, there, <laughs> there are... And maybe a fire There are several uh, outfits that have um, camo versions. Oh, there we go. Let's take a moment. So uh, another fix that we did, uh, having to do with radio commands. Um, we removed blind spots from the locate plague heart radio command that were making it very difficult for some players to find and destroy their final plague heart. So if you're stuck there, you should try it again after the update. So. This was, a, there's actually an entire fact page on support.stateofdecay.com, which, by the way, thank you everyone for reporting the problems you were having with Locate Play Cart to support.stateofdecay.com, because it was because Joe Swarner had this fact page up, and he's like, this is one of the most common problems people have, is they've located all of the play carts on the map, they've used that radio command, it's finding no more play carts, and they still can't progress to their legacy, they still can't get past that goal what's going on, and he ended up discovering through a lot of experimentation there were certain places on the map that where that radio command could not find play cards. Uh, and so, uh, you know, mission designers and I looked into it, we figured out what was going on, and we fixed it. Um, and so, so now it actually works again. So if you've been stuck on that, if you've been stuck on a map where you feel like you found all the play cards, you've defeated them all, and yet it's still not progressing, go try that radio command again uh, after you get the update, because it should totally work. Um, I can't believe you left my survey car 40, 40 miles away. <laughs> to bring this garbage bring, home? Yep. You, you handed the controller to me. That's true. You, this is what, we, this is what happens. <laughs> and there are some players who feel that Norma is the greatest car ever. I am also sort of in that camp, except, you know, the yeah, Brogans they, are named after my son, so they have to be the, my favorite car. Yo, what up, people? Okay, so the net, so there was one last radio command that we that we worked on. Uh, we fixed a problem that was making some rucksacks obtained by radio commands not count towards bounties and other mission objectives. Ooh, so so, so basically, each of our uh, each of our um, resources has got several different rucksack items that can represent it. Right, like your food could be a bag of flour, or it could be you know a bunch of junk food, or could, there's a whole bunch of different rucksacks it could be. And there's one particular type of rucksack that that is the one that shows up if you pull things out of your storage. Um, and so when we've got a mission or a bounty that's asking you to deliver rucksacks, we don't uh, d deliver rucksacks to your house. We don't count that particular rucksack uh, because if, because you could just go home, withdraw one, and then with, then put it back in and satisfy it, which would be just super lame, and nobody yeah. wants that. Uh, and so so there's that one particular one that doesn't do it. And but when you use the radio command to call out and find, say, like you're looking for food, and you say, hey, find me a site with food, that radio command was sometimes sticking the wrong type of rucksack. Whoa, okay. We're on fire now, this is fine. Uh, Everything's fine. It's quite fine. Um, it was sticking that kind of rucksack in the container. So sometimes you could go and get a rucksack 
that wouldn't satisfy any missions or bounties. And so that's been fixed. And then, um, let's see, let me double check, uh, see if any new questions have come in. See? Fine. Huh. Yep. Oh, Console Freak wants to know if there are any outfits that only show up in multiplayer. There are not. We did not put that restriction on it because, you know, we wanted people, we generally want people to be able to play our game in single player and have a full experience, even if, you know, they, like me, have no friends. So, you know, that's how that works. That, 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 that petered off really weird. You've got a friend in me. <laughs> You're right. I feel like we should burst into song now. Not very much, I though. Know. For the sake that. of everyone here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the only, and plus, the only songs I actually sing are Gilbert and Sullivan songs. Nice. Yeah, I, uh, I actually started singing a pink song in here while I was getting the stream prepared and then realized I should stop before we... because um, I'm not very good. Anyway, uh, so we fixed a bug that made it impossible to cure some survivors of their second case of blood plague after they had already survived it once. Uh, and this is one of those weird, obscure types of bugs. It, it was an extremely corner case because if you, if you cured a survivor and then, like, left, went far enough away from them, it wouldn't happen. Uh, or if you exited the game, and came back in, like huh. it would, it would, the issue would be cleared up by just like getting them to unload from active memory, basically. Oh, okay. So it was kind of a corner case where you would need a survivor to end up getting blood plague twice in relatively quick succession, and then um, suddenly it wouldn't work, and we'd have to figure out what series of events led to that being the case. And yeah, and checking, it's like, all right, well, what if I go away and come back? Oh, that fixed it. All right. Well, <laughs> that's why it hasn't been reported before. That makes sense. So yeah, so that's fixed. I was, you know, I doubt most of you ever ran into that one, but but we fixed it anyway. Um, and then we also we fixed a bug that would lock you out of your ability to use a gun if you aimed mm -hmm. too soon after dropping a mine while walking. So again, very corner case. You'd have to be walking, drop a mine, aim immediately before you're done dropping the mine, and then you wouldn't have a gun in your hand and you wouldn't be able. I do to that in real life in all the hand. time. Yeah, just drop. Yeah, you know what? Okay, this, enough with that. No, this is like this is like what it's like to be in your forties. For those of you who are not in your forties, is suddenly your body just won't do things correctly that you intended it to do. So you know, it's it's so this is a, a being forty simulator, uh, basically. Um, and Speak, then speaking of being forty simulator, this year at PAX East, I'm having my fiftieth birthday at PAX. What? So, uh, fall down, go boom, and Fallout Girl, and various other people. And I, I sent this out on Twitter, but I don't know a lot of you guys. I don't know if you're even on Twitter, but <laughs> probably healthier if you're not. We're gonna have a birthday party. So yeah. So uh, when? But when I, is, have to, I have to be in bed at seven because I'm old. When is Pax East this coming year? February 27th through March 2nd. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we'll see. Uh, so Brand will definitely be there. We'll see if we have a reason to be there. Uh, that's still TBD. So um, anyway. Abra, you were invited, but for some reason, I, I wonder if you're if you can get across the border. That's all. Uh, I don't know. There's probably some manhunt thing going on for Abra at this point. <laughs> oh, here's a question. So when you are a client at somebody else's game, and um, and th th this question comes from uh, Bitter Mercy. Uh, when you're a client in somebody else's game, and you know it, it populates, you know, uh, uh, loot for every every uh, person in the game, it's a sort of separate loot. Can the clients get outfits while they're out there in that game? Uh, yes, because it all pulls from the same loot table. All right, cool. So yeah, so even when you're playing multiplayer, you can keep on that outfits. That's cool. Uh, I'm glad that you're here because I do not know the answers to most of these questions. By the way, Better Mercy, my yeah. former landlord. Uh, let's see here. She was ruthless, by the way. By the way, uh, Wonder wants me to def definitely confirm that even though Brant has got personal plans uh, to, to, to go to PAX East, there are no official plans no, no, no. for Undead this Labs is, to go. This is this all self-funded. Purely, purely just, a Brant thing. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, and I've been thinking, it's been forever since I've gone to PAX East. Because uh, the last time we did it was, when, I think, when we were about to ship Lifeline, which was ages ago. Yeah. I, and so, so, so when I was talking about, like, oh, maybe we'll go, it's like, I'm talking about me. No, We're not actually. Yeah, the, this the studio is, doesn't have any plans right now. This is my birthday present to me. Yeah, and Brent, I mean, Brent, you, you've just you've been such a huge fan and supporter of PAX just since day one. That I, uh, I was at the very thing. first PAX. 
I was not. I think I came to like the fourth PAX or something like that, but immediately fell in love. It's like a family tradition. This, this is what my family does on Labor Day is we all we all go to, to PAX. I always looked for you and your and your girls charging around. Yeah, we were really recognizable because we, we had some super cosplay going on uh, for at least one of my kids. So, yeah. No, it's always it's always fun. And I, um, I didn't run into you this year, but I only went one day. Yeah. For PAX West, but um, yeah, I love I love me some PAX and PAX East is double great. I love the venue there. Actually, it's my favorite PAX to go. Though, if Microsoft would like to send me to PAX Australia, I'd <laughs> I'd certainly go down and judge it against the others. But um, yeah, and so many so many great fans that are on the East Coast. They made it over there, so I love going there. So that's why I'm giving myself a birthday present. Yeah, but there are no plans for the lab to go. And I, th I think we've probably given Wonder about five different heart attacks uh, over the course of this stream. Sorry, Wonder. <laughs> so apologize, Wonder. We're, we're doing our best. Um, we got four more patch notes to get through in the last 10 minutes, which I think we can do, because they're all missions. Uh, so we fixed some prog uh, progression blockers in the early missions that would halt them awkwardly if you performed actions out of order, such as healing your sick community member early by unexpected means. And this is actually, so this is one of the dangers of, of we, we always talk about how cautious we are about, you know, um, uh, announcing release dates for things or, uh, you know, talking about what we're working on. A big part of that is the fact that we, you know, every time we make a change to the game, we know there's a risk that we could be breaking other stuff. And, um, and for instance, this, this particular bug was, while we were working on Heartland, we changed the way that something worked in, uh, in the sort of the underpinnings of our missions to make sure uh, that, that we could do some very Heartland specific stuff. And we didn't realize that at the same time, we were, the thing that we had changed, we were actually using that tool to handle a bunch of edge cases in other missions, especially in the, start, in the first missions uh, of the game. And so when we, when we fixed this thing for Heartland to make Heartland possible, we completely broke something in the base game. But because it was such an edge case, it was like you know, if you do things out in a weird order, uh, like for instance, if you go into multiplayer and heal your sick character and then come back to the game and the character's already healed without you ever having actually done the action in the mission, we had a hand we were handling that, but the tool that we were handling it with broke because we were working on Heartland, and so and we never and we didn't catch it until after Heartland was in the wild, and so so now we fixed it. Uh, we realized what the change was, and uh, we had a heroic programmer spending a day figuring out how to fix it for the missions uh, that that were you depending on it, but not break it for Heartland because if we just if we just turned it back around again, it would it would cause just as many more uh, uh, problems. So. Nice work, Jurgen. <laughs> getting that fixed. Yeah, Jurgen is uh, is the unsung hero programmer of State of Decay 2 ongoing operations. Yeah, he, yeah, he's sort of like uh, I'm very lucky that I actually sit across from him uh, in the dev bay because it means that when I'm or I get really frustrated with a problem, he sometimes pipes up and is like, maybe code can fix that, and he gets in there and he fixes it. And I'm like. If I actually asked you for everything <laughs> officially that you've been doing, uh, I would be overstepping my bounds, and the producers would get after me. But yeah. so, but he's yeah, he makes a lot proactive. of stuff possible. Jurgen does nice. about four different programmer jobs, like every hour as well. Like tools, he has made like tools on our end so much nicer in so many places. So Jurgen's awesome. We're happy to have him. Uh, I think he's the program lead on State of K2 as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff. Um, we removed the option in Heartland. We removed the option uh, to deny the Wilkerson's their bomb making materials in the in the mission called Local Personalities uh, because it broke continuity in the story and didn't offer much value to the player community. Basically, uh, we had a problem where if you denied them their bomb making materials, they said, "No, I'm going to keep it and I'm not going to fulfill the mission." They would still move on to the next mission like nothing had happened, uh, and that was awkward and weird. And so, and we realized there's actually no point in keeping those bomb making materials. You can't do anything with them, so why not just take away that option? Yeah. So now you can't break the mission and make them seem weird uh, by making a pointless choice. Uh, and then Scott, you're so violent. I know. Yeah. Why do you kill all these zombies? Sheesh. Uh, we fixed a progression blocker uh, in Vic Reconnecting, which is a mission in Heartland, uh, that would strand the characters without a mission if you quit partway through recruiting one of them. So you'd recruit, you, you'd recruit one of them, get partway through, we would dismiss the other, uh, the other group and, and oh. kick them out of the map. That would save, and then if you quit the game and came back, the mission would try to restart, but one of the enclaves is gone. Oh, and boy. so we would just strand them with no mission and there's no way to complete it. Uh, and so, so we fixed that, so it doesn't do that anymore. Basically, we don't make the Enclave actually disappear until the mission is complete. Do we have winners from 
Oh, we probably do. I've been waiting for that to pop up. Let's see. Oh yes, uh, we do. Okay, so Megan just announced uh, the winners to our to our like our giveaway, which is going to be patches that look like this. Super awesome iron-on patch. The winners are the Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I don't know. I like, Fantastic Mr. Fox needs to do it, isn't he? Or like a thief? Fantastic Mr. Fox probably rob one of these. I don't know. But whatever. Uh, Fre uh, Fred Anglioliari. Anglioliari? Something like that? I'm probably butchering your name and I'm so sorry. Uh, but Fred wins one of these. Nighthawk45811 wins one of these. Congrats, everybody. Oh, B Downs 9210 wins one of these, and I think B Downs 9210 is on a winning streak. Yeah. Because uh, we got something else to talk about with B Downs uh, 9210. That's right. And then Multi Bob uh, gets one of these. So, uh, all of you folks, uh, make sure that, that if, if you haven't uh, been contacted already uh, by Megan by the, about the fact that you've won, uh, send an email to social at undeadlabs.com and uh, tell her who you are and that you uh, won one of these. And uh, if you're not one of those five people I listed, don't do that because that's fraud. That's right. And that would be very bad. Finally, we got one last, last patch note, uh, which is uh, we fixed a progression blocker in the mission Action Hero Returns Explosive Consequences. And I mostly wanted to say that because the title of that mission is so ridiculous and large. Uh, but yeah, there was a pro uh, progression blocker in there. I never knew what it was, but I wrote a patch note for it because I saw that it would fix the bug. So there we go. Uh, it was. Do you know what it was? Yeah, it was that um, when you you would get sent to just any enclave that you knew to buy some uh, fire bombs of some kind, mm -hmm. and after you bought them, the mission would just not progress. Cool. Well, <laughs> so I think that one actually might have been one of the other victims of the change to Heartland, uh, and so I think that the solution ended up being pretty straightforward. Uh, so luckily, a lot of those things have been fixed, and there were probably actually. Mission bugs we never knew about that we fixed uh, when, when, when Jurgen went through and, uh, and, 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 fixed, and fixed our tools. Oh, you've done it. Eh. So we got through all the patch notes and we still got three minutes Yay. left. We did this almost we exactly on time. We actually did our job. <laughs> and Sweet. I got through all your infestations. Oh! Thank you, by so the way. Rebel Radio wants to know, are the bunny jackets available in loot yet? The, uh, the exciting animal hoodies are not available. So, uh, and no particular promises about whether they ever will be, but certainly right now they are not. And then, let's see here. Hmm. We have another couple of questions about bugs that, uh, about whether certain bugs were fixed, and I don't know the answer. And so, uh, but maybe, I don't, so let me see if you happen to know. Sure. Um, did the multiplayer sneak door open bug get fixed? Do we know what that is? Uh, not, I don't recognize that one offhand. Um, what about uh, not being able to cure blood plague due to not being at home, even though you are? That may have been related to the um, curing twice thing. Okay, so so that one might, okay, so that might actually be it. Okay, so uh, X blue 555 maybe the blood plague one got fixed. We don't know about the sneaky door thing. Uh, so sorry about that, but um, hopefully, hopefully at least we hit 50% on that. So there's a lot of people saying, when is the release date, Jeffrey? Oh, that's right. We said we were going to do that by the end of the stream. We're not quite at the end of the stream yet. There's like a minute and a half left. Yeah, I don't know. Should, should, should we do it a little bit early? We don't, we don't have any other content. We are, we are getting really... Oh, wait, no. We have one more thing to say, which is, let me look at my notes here. Oh, yeah. So Undead Trials. Uh, just oh, wrapped up. That's right. I, I don't remember which number this was. This number six or something. This is a community event where people play competitive State of Decay two. Basically, uh, they get on uh, on streams with each other and they uh, they they try to 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 you know basically accomplish different feats and they're yeah. scored and, and, and judged against each other and winners always rise to the top and and get uh, prizes donated by the lab and so this uh, this time they were trying to kill Plague Hearts as fast as they could. And we, there were three winners. Uh, the one who did it in Nightmare the fastest was Scarproof with 12 hearts in 29 minutes. Big surprise. Which was crazy. Uh, in the Dread Zone, Magic Man 79 did it with eight hearts in 24 Congrats, minutes. Congrats, Magic. And in the Standard Zone, B Downs 9210, one of our patch winners, That's right. also uh, got 12 hearts in 28 minutes. So congratulations, you folks. Uh, you should follow at Trials Undead if you're interested in, 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 in you know, catching up with these, these events when they happen. Uh, at Trials Undead on Twitter. Uh, follow that. You'll get all the updates on, on when these things are happening. And if you want to know when this update is going to hit, it's going to be tomorrow. 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 October 1st. 
So obviously for watching this later on YouTube, it might be yesterday or the day before, <laughs> but tomorrow, October 1st is when this thing is gonna drop. So keep your eyes peeled. Uh, sometime, it's usually in the morning on the West Coast of the United States, uh, which means it could be later in the day, most of the other places where this game is played. Uh, so, but keep your eyes out for on your Xboxes. Sometime during the day, uh, you should get this patch dropping. So, update 11, coming out tomorrow. Maybe Microsoft decides to hit the OK button. Yeah. Then, yeah, exactly. Somebody somewhere else has to push a button. They roll it out through different servers at different times. They have some plan that they never tell us. It's, it's, above, <laughs> it's above our pay grade. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, that is our stream. So uh, thank you so much to Brant. Uh, for, for driving for most of the time and for telling us about the I, weapons. I did all the hard work. <laughs> yeah, and then I, and then I did all the, the infestations. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much to Scott for coming in and giving us all the details, things Pleasure that none here. of us in the studio knew except for you about, <laughs> about, about the outfits. This is true. A couple of things, yeah, it seems like, it seemed like only QA broadly and me specifically knew what was going on. <laughs> That's pretty much how it yeah, always goes. It's because we see everything, so... Yeah. And actually, you know, play the game sometimes. <laughs> Which none of us have time to do, right? We, we, yeah, it's too much, too much going on. I mean, I play the game 37,000 times a day, but it's not. <laughs> tiny little chunks. Tiny little chunks. <laughs> but uh, as usual, thanks to everyone for coming. We really, it, it, amazing to us that we have so many friends out there, people willing to listen to us drone on about this little game we made. Um, but we love you. Thanks for the support. And we're gonna keep giving you fun stuff like, you know, yeah, outfits. Like so, so we're gonna talk to another member of the outfits team next week. Uh, Ken George is our dev of the month, and so we're gonna we're gonna talk to him about he's he's the coder behind you know building the entire you know all how how the outfits work, how the closet interface works. So we'll talk to him next week. So come to the stream next week, and uh, we can't wait to see what you guys do with these outfits and, and how you dress up your community members. So tomorrow, October first, this is coming out, and we will see you folks later. Bye, everybody. Now we got 20 seconds of us being weirdos. That's right. Oh my god. <laughs> Just uh, uh, I wish I could count. I would know actually when to stop this. Now you saw the second that that I handed the controller over. Things Community engagement went up by like 74%. <laughs> Uh-oh, I got a phone call. Oh, it's my son. Oh, it's no, it's my sister. I don't want to talk to her. <laughs>